Oh, welcome back, everybody. And where we left off is we had terrain going off in every direction with a little bit of texture on it. So today we're going to make it so that this texture has a little bit more texture to it. And to do that, we're going to make it so that not only are there different kinds of blocks, but we also have radically different kinds of structures here. <clears throat> it's going to be a little bit much to put in one episode, but we'll give it a shot. So the first thing we have to do is we have to open up our chunk script. So we have this system here in create uh, uh, here in the start where it actually generates all of these values. We're going to go ahead and separate that out. Now, because we want to be able to do this uh, separately from everything else, we're going to go ahead and make it. Well, I guess it doesn't take long enough to worry about, so we'll just make it a void. But uh, all this stuff gets moved into that. No problem. This, however, is not what we want. We don't want this here. We actually need more functions. So here is where we get to start to make some choices here. So we know that we have a position that we want to calculate because that's what we use here, x, y, z, and then we add our own position to that. But uh, we need to be able to use our noise, noise field in a bunch of different ways. So we also need to have a vector 3 offset, and we need to have a float scale. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and calculate out the noise x, noise y, and noise z. Although, as usual, we have to make sure that we don't go negative, because if we go negative, it panics a little bit. Oop. And then we just return that value. You could, in fact, compress it into one line if you wanted one long-ass line. So just to see that work, let's go ahead and change this to use it. So we got the pause, we got our offset, which is our offset. And uh, lastly, we have our scale, which we were dividing by 20. So that's 1 divided by 20 for our scale. Oh, which we could put in, I think it's 0.05. Oh. Oh. Near. All right, and you can see that we have an error somewhere. Um, while the generation works okay, it generates a completely flat brick. which implies that our scale is wrong. Um, hmm. Yeah, yeah, okay. So in case you're wondering what just happened, uh, 1 divided by 20 evidently does not... Uh, when we, when we try and make it into a float, it comes out as 0, because it decided that 20 was going to be an integer and 1 was going to be an integer. So 1 divided by 20 had to be an integer, damn it! And that means that we get bullshit out of it. But you can see that um, we have the same brick over and over and over again, just like we did originally. And that problem is the same, th the same problem we had before. Uh, we're not actually adding the position we have for our transform. So let's just say pause plus equals transform.position. That way our bricks will nicely 
slide into each other as you can see. But we do have a problem where we've got a lot of very near duplicates. So you can see this one, this one, this one, this one, they all have this floating little thing in midair. Uh, and that's just because the permutations of the noise field are very predictable at this scale. Um, the noise field generator we're using is not particularly random, but that's okay. We don't really need it to be. Uh, because what we're actually going to do is we're going to add multiple noise fields together. So uh, we are going to go ahead and here we get a vector 3 offset. We're going to actually go ahead and calculate out several offsets. We need to have the uh, uh, grain 0 offset the grain 1 offset, and the grain 2 offset. And they can all just be the same line because a random dot value will be different for every one of those. Uh, and of course, because we set the seed up here, it'll be the same random values for that spot no matter how many times you load it. So here, when we get our noise value, we actually need to specify which noise value we are using. So. Now, this one's much too large. I didn't actually mean to make it quite that big. Uh, 0.23, how about that? You didn't like that? Why didn't you like that? What's wrong with it? Oh, it's not offset, it's grain. You gotta spell things right, um, or the compiler doesn't understand what the hell you're talking about. There we go. All right, so you can see that we now have a much more aggressive set of blocks. And the reason for that is simply because uh, we're no longer limited to being between 0 and 1. We are now between 0 and 3. Um, so we have a couple of options. One option is that we can adapt our whole system to work between 0 and 3, and there's a couple of other options. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make it so that our chunk is no longer just 20 high. We're going to make it 50 high. Uh, there we go. And the reason for that is because I want it to have uh, underground caves and stuff. So uh, you can see that with 50 high, there's no there's none of that sharp cropping across the top, but we still have a lot of floating debris. So we have got a lot of options as to how we want to handle that sort of detail work. But what we're actually going to do is we're going to take this noise value and we're going to change it depending on how high off the ground it is. And you can see that we started doing that with this, but we need something that's a little bit more easily understandable. So if y is less than height divided by 2, then leave noise value as it is. Otherwise, float y val equals y minus height divided by 2. And then we'll subtract. like this. And that'll give us a really, really sharp cutoff watch. Oh, it didn't. In fact, I'm not sure it made any difference at all. How high off the ground is that? Okay, so that is 25. So it actually, it did make a difference, but it turns out there's a lot of, uh, a lot of areas that are... So let's actually go ahead and say... Um, So it did actually do exactly what I thought it would, except for the ground is a little bit more porous than I expected. Uh, that's still too porous. See, this is 25 here, just in case you're wondering. Oh, another option is, uh, now that I mention it, this is actually a better option. Let's go ahead and make noise value equal to... Oh, this is a much better option. I don't know why I didn't think of this. Uh, By doing it like this, we can keep it between 0 and 1, but also make it so that it's understandable. Uh, there we go. And we don't have to do this part here, because we're going to actually do that in a different spot to allow for mountains. You're going you're gonna, to, I think, like this. Oh, 
More than 65,000, huh? I somehow doubt that. Alright, so we got a solid brick because we're no longer modulating by height. So what we need to do is we need to modulate by height, but we're actually going to modulate by height uh, using several different uh, methods here. We're going to modify this grain uh, by a certain amount each time. So, for example, this one will go ahead and say noise value divided by equals float y divided by 10. Uh, y divided by 5. And we're going to do the same thing here. And that means that in the end, these values are going to be weighted much more towards the ground. Um, and they're not going to be very existent high up. But this guy will work at whatever height he happens to be at. So we should get some floating blobs along with a very heavy ground layer. We didn't. What the heck am I doing wrong here? Oh, oh, I'm, I'm doing it... I'm doing the grains in the wrong direction. Uh, these actually make the landscape smaller, not bigger. That was actually the core of my problem. There we go. Uh, the smaller the grain is, the wider each bulge will be. There we are. Now that's what I was expecting to see. And all of that struggling I did earlier was because I wasn't seeing what I expected to see because I'd reversed my multiplication and my division. Brilliant. So you can see that what we've got is we've got uh, some floating islands that are very, very smooth. And then we got down here a lot more careful detail. Uh, and if we actually wander over to one of the sides and start summoning more land, you can see this pattern continues where you've got the ground with a lot of detail work, and then you've got these very smooth skies, uh, very smooth floating islands. So you can see these perfectly smooth floating islands, but this relatively bumpy ground. And that's because the ground is being calculated with a higher uh, scale, which means that each bump in the noise field is smaller on the map. So you get these small bumps and these big bumps on the noise field, they're actually the same size. The difference is simply how fast we travel through the noise field. Now obviously we're not going to use this as our actual uh, landscape. We have uh, an issue where um, we actually want our mountains to have plenty of uh, complexity to them and we don't want our mountains to randomly float in the sky. Or maybe you do. I don't. So what that means is we actually have to calculate out our mountains first. Like this. Except for without that part, because it makes no sense. And then we can just add our mountain value. But we do have to make sure to change our mountain value by the y-axis so that it doesn't simply float off in deep space. Um, now the question is whether or not this is a good value. I think I'm going to make it so that it's divided by 8. And of course I have to divide the mountain value, not the noise value. So this should allow us to stack, because we're stacking the mountain and the... Uh... Oh, I don't need this math max nonsense over here. We're stacking the mountain value with the uh, with the rest. What do you mean mountain? Oh, it's mouton value for you. There we go. So now we should have. Uh, that didn't work. I think our weighting is blunting it a little too aggressively. Hmm. I actually don't know what the ideal is for this. Um, there's a lot of different options, and I think that this isn't a very good way to do it. I think that I am trying to bludgeon a mediocre way into working, and I don't really want to do that. Uh, for example, there should never be any fall-through. Um, but Y is never less... It, so that, that... Yeah, so what we actually need is... I can't imagine this is going to work very well, though. I didn't. Oh. 
I think I'll stop here for today because I want to actually think about the best way to do these. Uh, and I think that there is an easy algorithm, and I've just I can't remember it off the top of my head. But you can see that the basic idea for uh, making landscapes that don't suck completely is to combine a couple of different scales from a couple of different points on the noise field. And that allows you to create small features and large features at the same time. We're also going to have to use brushes later on um, because not every feature can be created out of a noise field. Uh, like, for example, houses, you wouldn't want to try and create them out of a noise field. But um, in the next episode, I'm going to figure out some way to... Oh, I just figured something out. One of the core problems that we've got with this texture is that we don't have tangents. Of course not. We're not defining the tangents. We're not calculating the tangents. All right, so for now, I'm actually going to go ahead and just turn off the... Um, turn off the bumped diffuse and just take it to, to diffuse uh, and that doesn't that won't look quite as nice close up but it doesn't have 10,000 error messages later on we can talk about whether or not we want to calculate tangents especially when we start to talk about tapering alright anyhow uh, that's it for this episode in the next episode we're going to refine this so that it doesn't suck see you then